So I'm here with video creator, Brother Drew. How are you doing today? Hey, man, I'm on this side of the dirt, big bro. It's a good day, man. How are you doing? Man, I'm excellent. You know, thank you so much for taking the time. Like, I um saw, like, a video, like, you know what I mean? It's something that you put out. And, like, you were explaining how, like, you know, like, one of the most gangster things you could do is, like, believe in Christ. That resonated with me. You know, um, I'm a believer. Like, you know, I believe in Jesus. And I think, like, you know, and stuff and everything, like, I... I thought like you know what I mean and stuff that was like really true because it's like you look at the Bible and stuff and everything. Like I'm inspired by like the stories and stuff of like, you know, just different characters, you know, from Moses to Noah, you know, and stuff and everything. Like who who are some of the people that inspired you in the Bible? Oh man, you know it got to be Moses, bro. It got to be Moses, Elijah, you know what I'm saying? Um Peter was a ruffian, man. You know, like I said in that video, bro. You mess with Jesus, man. That dude cut his ear off, man. Like, Peter wasn't playing, bro. <laughs> yeah, so, but Elijah, man, I don't know, big bro. I got to tell you, man, something about Elijah, bro, like that story. Um, yeah. when, when he went up against the 400 prophets of Baal, man, like that right there. And it's cool, man, because, yo, he was taunting them. Like, man, maybe your God's sleeping, man. Man, what, man? And they, them people cutting themselves, bro. And it's just like, man, maybe your God sleep, man. Maybe he busy, man. Let me show you the power of my God. Boom. You know what I'm saying? So I like that type of stuff, man. I I do, man. Like, you know, I, I believe, like, you know, in the, the power of God. And, like, you know, I mean, I felt like, you know, the spirit that I should connect with you and stuff and everything because it's like I know you have an interesting backstory as well. Like, you know, yeah. I was like, you know, reading a little bit about it and it was talking about like, you know, how you went to prison. Can you talk a little bit about how like you were meeting and stuff and everything like, you know, uh, you came to find God? Yeah. So let me correct you on that, big bro. Like, I ain't never been to prison, man. Okay. Um, yeah. Never been to prison. You know, I did a couple of overnighters and whatnot, bro. Okay. But um, I've experienced life, bro. Like, I just turned 36 on Sunday, bro. And, you know. Like, I can't, like, my story, bro, like, I ain't come from rats and roaches, you feel me? I ain't come from, you know what I'm saying, the slums, you know what I'm saying? Like, I came from a good, loving family, bro. Okay. Um, You know, in a typical 80s baby story, you know what I'm saying? Daddy ain't there, mama on drugs, so, you know, you raised up in, with grandma and grandpa, you know what I mean? Um, But, you know, growing up, bro, um, I had a good childhood, bro. Yeah. I had a good childhood, man. And, you know, things happen, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? When I was around, when I was around seven, eight years old, bro, I had wound up getting molested by one of my uncles, bro. And um, and it's crazy because I looked up to him, bro, because he was a gangbanger. Okay. And, you know what I'm saying? He was out here, you know, repping GD and throwing up folk and all this other stuff, bro. And, dog, it's crazy, bro, because come to find out years later, he was molested. And the person that molested him was was molested, bro. So it was like a crazy cycle, bro. Um, and so growing up, man, like having that happen to me, I always had like this chip on my shoulder, like, man, you know what? Like, bro, I'm never gonna let nobody hurt me, bro. Like, I'm never gonna let nobody embarrass me like that. You know what I mean? Um, and so I kind of grew up, like I said, bro, with a chip on my shoulder, man. And um you know, fast forward some years later, bro, like, oh, it's probably around like 15, 16, bro, is when mom's like, a, you know, drug addiction, like really showed its ugly head, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. um, and uh, that, that was, that happened for a number of years, bro. Uh, and that really affected me, man, because, you know, coming from a single parent home, you know what I'm saying? Your mom's the only thing you got, bro. Yeah. And to see your mom go on that down road spiral, bro, was it was painful, man. It was hurtful, bro. Um, you know what I'm saying? And um, it, it it was wild, man. And um, you know the gang banging stuff, bro. That stuff, you know, that stuff didn't start till like later on, bro. Because you know, um, like for me, bro, at first, like, bro, it was, it was, it was the neighborhood, man. Like, you know, the dudes I grew up with, bro, like, man, we, we protect, we defend this neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we grew up, man. Um, and then you fast forward a little bit, bro, like to when I got introduced into the gang banging and all that stuff, bro, because I was against it for the longest time, bro. I thought that was weak, bro. Yeah. Um, 
But fast forward some years later, man, like I wound up linking up with some dudes I used to go to school with. And like, bro, these dudes is organized, bro. They flagged up all this other stuff. And I was just like, yo, like, man, this stuff pretty wild, bro. And like I say, bro, I was more about, you know what I'm saying, defending my turf, bro, where I grew up at, where my grandparents lay their head at, bro. Like I, like I was the first to be like, oh, man, listen, I'll give you my address, bro. Pull up if you want to, you know, that type of foolishness. And, uh, but when I seen these dudes that I had grew up with, bro, like I said, was organizing all that, man, like, again, bro, not having a father in the home, bro, as a young man, you want something to be a part of, bro. You want something that has power, mm-hmm. right? You look at the dudes, man, they got money, they got the girls, they organize, bro. You make one phone call, everyone coming to your aid, bro. But. And I'm going to be honest with you, big bro. Like, I ain't make a good gangbanger, man. And the reason why I say that, because like I said, bro, it was more about my neighborhood. Okay. You know what I'm saying? My family. And I got into the inner circles of the of the organization, bro. Um, And after a while, man, I was like, wait a minute. Like, we all supposed to be under one nation. But why is it? Y'all throwing up the same things, but y'all shooting and killing each other, bro. Like, where's the brotherhood in there? That didn't make sense to me. And that, that ain't never sit right with me, bro. Because I'm like, how are we going to say, oh, we brothers, we die together, we ride together, all this other nonsense. But, but man, y'all shooting each other. Right. That never made sense to me, man. You know. And it's crazy, bro. Like, I wind up stepping away from that, bro. Thank God, man. But, you know, it's crazy when... You know, they say you guilty by association, bro. Like, I remember being pulled over and the cop straight up was like, what's up, GD? And like, bro, that hit me, man. I was like, like, man, to hear that, bro. Like, really? Is that what y'all label me as? Right. Like, for real? You know what I'm saying? And, uh, bro, I remember, you know, in, in, in the mix of the whole gang life, bro, like, there was a... a, a I'm going to say a brief moment, bro, where in my heart, I was like, yo, man, in the beginning, this is something like I could stand up for, bro, because you do your history and all that, how gangs originated, right. right, was about protecting the neighborhood, protecting the loved ones, the fatherless and all that other stuff. But, bro, once you mix drugs, women, money and all that, greed, bro, that's when it all gets watered down, bro, and it ain't about brotherhood no more, man. It's like, and it's just a whole road to destruction. Like, bro, we sending kids on dummy missions, bro. Crash dummies. Like, bro, the youngest dude in the set, bro, got two life sentences, bro. He was the youngest one. And it's just like, for what? Street credit? Right? Ten years up the road, bro, now they all beef and they're not even family no more, bro. Now they pointing the fingers at each other and I'm just like, bro, listen. That gang stuff ain't the beat, bro. Yeah. It ain't the beat, man. No, 100%, man. Like, um, I, you know, am a uh, fan of this book. It's uh, by Richard Wormbrand. You know, it's called, like, Torture for Christ. I read it, like, you know, I was actually in jail. Like, I haven't spent, like, you know, a whole lot of time in jail. But, like, you know, I spent, like, four months here, 11 months. And, like, um... I read this book, like, you know what I mean? Except one time when I was locked up and everything, you know, it was like talking about this guy, you know, who was in Poland and like, you know, at the time it's a communist country. And so he wasn't allowed, like, you know what I mean? Except to practice his religion. And he had to like, you know, actually like, you know, um, kind of like hide from the authorities, you know, yeah. and I feel like, you know, there's a lot of leeway, you know, with like the criminal justice system and stuff, everything to like, you know, manipulate and put people there in prison and stuff, everything like longer than they deserve to be, you know, uh, more than they like, you know, uh, probably have done, you know, a lot of people get overcharged, especially like minorities. So like, you know, um, can can you speak to that? Like, you know what I mean? And stuff, everything, like, have you seen that? Like, you know what I mean? And stuff, uh, people get railroaded by the system. Oh, for sure, bro. It happens every day in America, man. Every day, bro, and it's crazy because I'm going to say, bro, there ain't one African-American brother that I had around me growing up that ain't did time. All of them have done time. And it's crazy, bro. Like, mind you, like, yeah, bro, like, 
them boys was really out there. You feel me? Yeah. But I'll give you a, a, a real life situation, bro. So there's this dude, right? My my aunt wind up getting with this dude. Um, and he's like half Jewish or something. Big money, right? He's into real estate. Now his son, a little Jewish boy, man, you know, graduated, good grades. To, to us, bro, he a square, you feel me? But he wants to be part of it. You know what I'm saying? Kid, bro, he got straight hair, bro. Locked it up. All this other stuff, bro, got caught with an AK-47 at school. Now, a lot of this stuff is public record. But do you think this dude spent a day in jail? No. Do you think, bro, his daddy paid for his whole record to get expunged? Wow. And it's like, bro, for us who ain't got money like that? Right. Bro, we're up the road, bro. It yeah. ain't no getting expunged. It ain't no... Oh, listen, my daddy gonna set me free. No, oh, man, listen, bro, we gonna lay down. That's a huge difference. Like, you know, if you have the ability to be able to pay for, like, you know what I mean, a private lawyer, you know, I think like, you know, some people and stuff who get taken advantage of, they have to rely on a public defender. Not to say that there aren't good public defenders. I've had like, you know, some uh, good public defenders. And then like, you know, I've seen like, you know, like, hey, like you, you're, I'm gonna need a private lawyer. Cause like, you know. <laughs> public defenders, bro. <laughs> yeah, mostly. Mostly, but like I've gotten like, you know, um, I've, I've been lucky, you know, and I've, I've, I've met some people and stuff and everything who has some good stories. You know, there's some public defenders that really take the law seriously, you know, but uh, like mostly and stuff, they're, you know, they're working for the state, you know, yeah. and stuff. Uh, so like, you know, they're not going to do a whole lot for you, encourage you to plea out. Sometimes the plea may be fair. Like, you know, it's really like, you know, if you did what you what you're being accused of. And then, like, you know, it's like, you know, can you live with, like, you know, as far as, like, the time? I think, like, but there's also, like, you know, a time, like, you know, when I was arrested and stuff, I didn't do anything like I was accused of. Like, you know what I mean? It's everything. This is, like, a lie. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's everything. And am I going to go home and stuff everything? Like, I didn't do, like, you know what I mean? Even the police reports show, like, you know what I mean? It's everything that I didn't do this. Like, you know what I mean? It's everything. This is, like, a bullshit case. I don't even see, like, you know, how this is happening in America. I, I came home. You know what I mean? It's everything, but like, <laughs> it's like yeah, after, yeah. after 11 months, you feel me? Like, you know what I mean? It's which is a significant amount of time. And that's the, the one thing and stuff, everything like I was charged with and stuff, everything I didn't do at all. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? This is like completely false. Like, the other time and stuff, everything like um, where I did the four months, I was charged. Like, you know, but they couldn't prove what they said I did. Like, you know what I mean? It's everything like I did it. But like, you know what I mean? They couldn't prove it. You know what yeah. I mean? I did four months. So like I did longer on the 11 months and stuff and everything where it's like, I didn't do this shit at all. You know what I mean? This is just something like, you know what I'm saying? It's like made up and fictitious. So- That's crazy, man. Yeah. So like, you know what I mean? And stuff and everything. But like, I I mean, like I, I like to believe that the criminal justice system can work sometimes for people. I don't think like all those people are heartless. I think there's still some good yeah. people in it, but it needs a lot of reform. It could definitely oh, be- yeah. better. You know what I mean? And stuff when he, I was uh locked him in uh Pennsylvania, it was this guy and stuff everything, you know, he's going to jail for probation violation and stuff everything for 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 a joint. You know what I mean? And stuff everything, like he eventually went home, like you know what I mean, and stuff they didn't violate him on his probation and stuff, you know, but like he still stayed in jail for two weeks and stuff and everything, like you know, over a joint. So it's like you know, stuff like that that still happens, and you know, people who probation violations, like you know, where they're they spend like you know, upwards of like 50 years, I think it was a guy in like Michigan and stuff and everything, like, you know, where he's been in jail for 50 years because he violated his probation and his original charge was like a marijuana charge. And then he violated it on like a shoplifting charge and he's been in jail for like 60 years or something. Yo, ain't it, ain't, ain't it crazy, big bro, that think about, can you, bro, I can't even wrap my head around it, bro. Imagine all the old heads up the road right now. Did 40, 50 years, bro. But now you can walk around anywhere in the United States and burn, and, and blow it. Yeah, man, that's that's kind of crazy. Like you know, crazy, um, bro. and like I think like Joe Biden like recently uh, signed an act like you know what I mean and stuff to expunge people's records. You know, like basically like if you did have marijuana charges, which adds some relief. You know, it's a lot of opportunities and stuff for people to get involved in like you know the recreational marijuana field. Like you know, but like you know, yeah. minorities have been like uh, shut out of that because we haven't had like you know what I mean as far as like as a whole, you know, the economic power to, to be involved. 
you know, you right. see like celebrities and stuff and everything, and like uh, certain like African Americans and stuff, but it's not like a whole lot of African Americans in that space, really. Yeah. I thought it's like entertainers, you know. Right, right, right. You know, um, what's next for you and your journey and your walk with God? Oh man, big bro, I'm gonna tell you, man. Like in a couple of days, bro, it's gonna be a year since uh. I'm, I'm gonna tell you my little Job situation, man. If you know anything about the book of Job. I love that book. You, yeah, bro, like it, it, you know, it's one thing to say you have faith and you're a Christian and this and that, man, when everything's going good. But when your faith is tested, bro, you know, and I was at that point about a year ago, man, like in a couple of days, bro, like we lost it all, bro. Um, We lost it to a flood, man. Like the upstairs, we was in an apartment and like, I've been walking with God since 2013, bro. Right after my 26th birthday, uh, I made that that conscious decision, man. Like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to the scriptures, and I'm gonna do my best to walk by. But a year ago, man, uh, like I said, bro, we lost our apartment to a flood, bro. The people upstairs, Ben had toilet issues. So, man, one day I'm at work, man. My wife called me. And uh, water's pouring out of the AC unit. So I'm thinking, dang, okay, it's the AC. So I call my landlord. Landlord called the AC. And AC I'm like, no, bro, this ain't got nothing to do with your AC. But as he's, you know what I'm saying? Mind you, this is within an hour span, bro. We're starting to see the ceiling bubble up. We're starting to see the walls bubble up. And then, man, the ceiling's coming down, all this other stuff, bro. And, uh... Long story short, bro, we lost that apartment and we had to get out because it was inhabitable. You know what I mean? Uh, and and bro, we've been really fortunate and blessed, bro, to have some awesome in-laws, man. My wife's people took us in. Uh, and then shortly after that, bro, about a month later, man, my car, the motor locks up. So we're out of a house, my car locks up, man. Um, fast forward to you know what I'm saying? About maybe two months ago, um, my grandma had a slip and fall. So she's hurt. She's been in the rehabilitation center. At the same time, grandma got hurt. My mom wound up relapsing. Like, bro, my mom was almost coming up on nine years clean and sober, bro. And she relapsed and she went back to smoking crack. And, um, and I say about the Job situation because Bro, when you have nothing left but God, that's going to see where your character is really at, man. And I tell you what, bro, I say all that to say this, big bro, that this season that I'm in with losing so much has been the most humbling season, bro, in the, what, 10 years I've been walking with God, bro. Because I was comfortable in my apartment. We had it all, bro. And it was a nice apartment too, bro. Nice. But, man, it wasn't until we lost it, bro. To where, like, man, it brought me closer to God, bro. It it brought me closer to the scriptures. And, you know, it puts me in another situation where I'm under someone else's roof. Now I'm dealing with other people's habits of life. I'm dealing with, you know, other people's emotions and how they do things. And, like, bro, I've learned so much, bro, about God, bro, within this last year. Um, and it's really been amazing, man. And, um... Being faithful, being obedient, bro. Um, the fruits are starting to show. And you know what I'm saying? I never, I don't know. I know you said you you seen uh, the thing that I said or whatever. Like, yeah. it's crazy. One of my good friends, man, she called me from Georgia today. She's like, bro, tell me how I'm scrolling through Instagram, bro, and I see your face on there. And I'm like, bro, that's yeah. crazy. That's crazy, man. Because it's real, bro. Like, listen, all that tough guy shit, bro. Man, listen. Start walking through these scriptures, bro. Let's see how tough you really are. Man. Because when I was out there in the world, bro, imagine like, bro, if I would have lost the apartment back then when I didn't have a right stable mind, bro. Man, the enemy would have been like, yo, man, just go ahead and check out, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You lost this, you lost that, man. Like, you know. When life gets hard, bro, people want to check out, bro. I just lost my cousin February 25th, bro. He hung himself. 
I'm so sorry for your loss. Bro, he, bro, thank you, bro. He, bro, he texted me like a few minutes before he did it. And he said, hey, and I texted him back immediately like, yo, what's up? Bro, the next day, my people calling me like, yo, you heard about cuz? I'm like, what you mean? Like, he texted me last night, but I'm like, yo, he hung himself. And I'm like, damn. Yo, uh, and so, like, bro, I've always been a fighter, man. And I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't believe in tapping out. Right. And so it's like, you know what, bro? Whatever, whatever God, um, Whatever road God has me on, bro, listen, I've seen the fruits of it, man. And it's cool. Listen, on my bad days, man, God is still good, bro. Man, on my terrible days, bro, God is still good, man. I'm like, you know what, bro? Like, holding on because the Bible says, man, those who endure to the end will receive the crown of life, bro. Yeah. And I want that crown, bro. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want to hear at the end of my journey, big bro, well done my good and faithful servant, man. Because you know what? All the destruction and all that bullshit I put out in the streets, big bro, man, God had me turn that around, man, into love on people, bro. Like, listen, I'm not one to preach to the choir. Like, I don't go into the churches, man, because listen, if you're there at church, cool, you're good, you all right, man. But listen, he left the 99 to go after the one, bro. You know what I'm saying? I go after the ones who ain't going to church, bro. That's where my heart, that's where my passion is, bro. Man. And bro, I've talked to killers, all kinds of people, all different from all different walks of life, man. Oh, little old, you know what I'm saying? Little old ladies, bro, all the way down from killers and all this other stuff, man. Just and it's amazing, bro. It's amazing, bro. Like, bro, like I can grab a killer by his hands, bro, and tell him, hey, bro, listen, I love you, man. God loves you, bro. I, and that is that is the most beautiful thing, bro. Because as men, you're taught like, man, dog, don't show that vulnerability. Oh, you soft, this, that. Hey, listen, bro, I ain't soft, bro. Man, Jesus was like, you know, like you said, like, you know, I feel like just like a masculine man. You know, like, you know, I when I read that, like, you know what I mean, in the 12 disciples and stuff and everything, I feel like, you know, pop culture and stuff and everything has his take and stuff and everything and tries to make it seem like he was like a hippie and stuff and everything. But like, you know, it was like, you know, these were like real men, like, you know what I mean, in the yeah. desert. It's some everything like you know, 40 days, like you know, uh fasting, like not eating, like this is a very disciplined person walking, like you know, everywhere that they go, like you know, what I mean some studying, like you know, what I mean, even at the age of like you know, what I mean some everything 12, or like, where he's like you know, talking to like you know the leaders of the time. So it's yeah. it's, it's a lot of respect and some everything. I think they that people have to have, like, you know, when you read those stories and some everything, and it's like you just see like this is this is the truth. And like I think like a lot of times and stuff everything like people with some everything like uh, don't want to give it the acknowledgement because like you know if you give it the acknowledgement you have to acknowledge the fact that like you know what I mean what he says about the devil is true as well and like you know what I mean and like you know this is pretty much his world that we're living yeah. in some everything you know because of sin but yeah. like you know, um always like you don't know, believe like you know the greatest honor and some everything was like to die for Christ. You know, it's everything that's what the Bible and stuff, everything talks about. I think it's a part in Revelation. I think, like, you know what I mean? It's really powerful. It's everything, like, you know, it's like whip all the people who are like beheaded and stuff, everything in the name of Christ and stuff, everything. Like, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? If that is like necessarily my fate, like, you know what I mean? It's something, but I think, like, you know what I mean? It's something that's, that's so amazing. Like, you know, people who will, you know, really sacrifice. And it's so much better to sacrifice that than, like, you know, some street gang or like yeah. stuff for money or like material gang. You know, yeah. I feel like you know what I mean, and stuff. And everything is such more of a a worthwhile cause for someone who like you know, created you, loves you, knows like everything about you, like you yeah. know. Yeah, so. absolutely, man. And you know, you said uh, about a book, right? I don't know if you ever heard. It's called Book of Book of the Martyrs by DC Talk, and bro, they share stories. And I'll tell you, I'm gonna tell you a story real quick, bro. And this story always touched me, bro, because you know what. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. The American church looks soft, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You got these clowns up there, bro. Um, ain't talking about and like here in the states, bro. We don't suffer persecution. Right. You know what I'm saying? We think because we have a disagreement. Oh man, they're persecuting me. They don't agree with me. Yada yada yada. No 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 no. Let me tell you about what happens in Cambodia. Let me tell you about what happens over there, bro. Yeah. Right? There was a man that was preaching, 
in the underground church, just like you said, bro, they get killed for this type of stuff. Right, right. right? Bro, the gorillas came, bro, and they took his daughters, and they were like, look, man, renounce your faith, bro. We're going to kill your daughters, man. The pastor man looked at his babies, and he said, hey, listen, I'll be right there. Right? They hung his daughters in front of him. Wow. Right? He said, renounce your, they said, the gorilla said, renounce your faith, man. And he said, no. They said, listen, bro. Lay down his whole congregation on some railroad tracks, bro. They fired up the steam engine. And this is recorded, right? Yeah. This is back in like 1961. So this is fairly new, bro. This ain't, you know what I'm saying, thousands of years ago, bro. They fired up the steam engine, bro. And them people, bro, laying on the track started singing praises to God, bro. And in the record, bro, it says that they did not stop singing till the last one got ran over and killed, bro. Wow. So it's like, bro, when I hear about faith like that and I see how weak Christians can be, bro, yeah. I'm like, listen, bro, I'm not that weak, bro. I'm not that weak. And I can't, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I can't say I've been laid down on no train tracks, but man, like, man, this faith is something worth fighting for, bro. Why do you think it's been so tampered with? Right? Like, man, I'm not for this watered down stuff, man. They think Jesus was soft, bro. Man, Jesus flipped tables, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, bro, like, this faith walk, man, I I take it serious, bro. And I love it, man. It's my passion, bro. I love to teach, man. I love to tell people about the, the saving grace and power of God, bro. Because, man, I was a mess, man. And I'm like, there, I, there's so much evidence, bro, that God is real, man. That, man, listen, you ain't going to convince me otherwise, bro. Most definitely, man. Um, Rougher Drew, this interview, like, you know what I mean? I really enjoy speaking with you. Like, I feel like, you know what I mean? So if you have, like, you know, such an amazing, like, you know, uh, story to share. And, like, you know, I love, like, the passion that you have for Christ. And, like, you have a you have a real message, you know. And, I, um, man, it was, a, it was an honor, bro. Anytime, like, we got to do this again. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Man, listen, I appreciate you, you know what I'm saying, uh, considering me to, to, to bring me on here, bro. I appreciate your time, man. And, um... I like what you're doing, big bro, and I encourage you, man. Keep it up, bro. Most keep definitely, it up, man. Like you're a man and stuff. Uh, continue to have faith, man. And uh, you know, I, I believe, man. Like in you, you, you have a lot of uh, like wisdom and stuff, and everything to share with people, man. And like I think, like you know, I mean, you'd be a great, like you know, motivational speaker and stuff to like you know, speak at like schools and stuff, and everything. If I um know anybody in my network looking for a speaker, I'll let them know, man. Yeah, man, that's real, bro. I appreciate that, big bro. For sure. Have a good one, bro. Awesome, brother. Thank you, man. Definitely.